So let me explain how this works. Uh, this adapter here, it's a monolithic adapter that can be connected to pretty much any um, top class programmer that exists. Uh, that's what we're going to use to communicate with the NAND. The NAND is uh, the memory storage uh, that's inside of this uh, device. Uh, through the controller, uh, through the interface, um, right here, uh, interface talks to the controller, controller talks to the memory, memory comes back and goes out. Uh, that's if the device is functional. If the device does not load up, uh, and especially if it's a monolithic device, uh, the options for repair are pretty much non-existent uh, unless you have problems with the uh, top layer circuitry that could be patched to bring uh, the device back to life. I'll link a case similar to that in the description if you guys are interested in seeing um, <laughs> that repair being done. Uh, but in this case, um, I don't believe we have any problems with the circuit. Most likely we have a problem with uh, uh, the memory itself. Regardless of what the problem is with this unit, uh, we're going to get access to the data using NAND protocol. Uh, with monolithic devices, this can get tricky because uh, uh, the schematic that is used to uh, put this unit on a breakout isn't standard. It's not something that uh, is followed by every brand, every make and model. Uh, coming down to it, it could be a model specific design that uh, the producer will only create one time for that specific lineup and never come back to it again. So having access to these schematics uh, is essential. And uh, if um, you don't have a schematic, uh, pinout research needs to be made, which is also a highly technical procedure uh, that requires logic analyzer and connecting majority of the uh, um, pads that are existent on the top surface in order to find out what that schematic should be. Now, uh, on this adapter, we have different signals uh, that are required for NAND protocol access. And uh, these signals need to be linked to uh, traces that correspond with those signals on the actual device itself. So once that's done, the adapter will be able to ID the memory chip and take the copy, physical copy of that memory chip and save it as a binary data file. Later that data file will be manipulated with the help of the software that comes with the tools uh, in order to uh, allow us to form the file structure or at least get to uh, the data in a uh, form that it could be visualized. So uh, every card that's monolithic has this protective coating that needs to be stripped out to expose uh, the circuit that's underneath it. So that's what we're going to start with. And uh, to do that, I'm going to use fiberglass uh, scratch pan. Uh, there are other things that could be used to strip it. If you're doing this at home, I highly recommend not to do it. You're most likely going to damage the circuit, make the recovery uh, more difficult, if not impossible. So this stripping the back of this card is not going to help getting card recognized in any way. We're simply stripping the back of this card for the purpose of establishing connection because the traces underneath that mask are made out of copper and right now they're isolated. So we cannot put a wire to it and solder it on because of the coating. Coating needs to come off to expose copper. Because I'm using a fiberglass scratch pen, that thing throws a lot of uh, fiberglass bristles everywhere. I don't want to sting myself and have a fiberglass splinter uh, in my hand for two days. Um, so I use a piece of paper and a piece of tape to affix the unit in place. Wet the area around it. and start brushing. Over here you can see that there's clearly traces poking through that uh, we will have to make connections with. So there it is. This is uh, what we're going to work with. So this is basically uh, the pre-setup. 
So the next thing we're going to need to do is uh, pretend the um, uh, connections that we're going to make on the device and uh, we will also need uh, to get a wire. The wire that I use is a 40, um, 46 I believe, yeah, uh, 46 gauge wire. Uh, it burns off quick, it's uh, isolated so it's got a coating on it, doesn't short itself out if it touches each other and it's easy to tin the tips of it because it's really thin coating on it uh, just because the wire itself is thin so let's go ahead and pre-tin the um, the circuit so i'm going to start wiring up the left side and then we'll get back to the right side Then we need to uh, add some command wires. We don't know if there is one CE or not. This is a 16 gig device according to my notes and uh, it may turn out to be a 16 gig size bank or it may be 8 gig size bank. If it's an 8 gig size bank there's got to be two of them but if it's got a 16 gig size then there's only going to be one. So we're done with this side as you can see we got all of our bus wires linked up. One, three, five, seven, ground we gonna use uh, and probably use this for ground later for the ground I use a much thicker wire same thing goes for VCC this is the chunk we can use for the ground
Okay, so uh, the bus is totally wired up. So we need the address latch. That's a second one. So you need to uh, link this trace but it's got too many wires going on here it's too crowded I'm gonna put it in here instead just because it's all um, connected it doesn't doesn't matter for us where it's linked done so I think we have everything we needed uh, for the exception of uh, power and the power as I explained earlier I'm gonna use a thicker gauge wire to run it The wiring is done, so the final phase of this uh, is just testing. So the red wire in a diode test mode goes on the ground and just gonna go uh, on each signal one by one. We want to hear the beep. Single beep. VP we did not connect so for the ground we should have a constant beep and for the VCC single good so the pass uh, the test is, is 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 done the test had passed um, flux I kept it very minimalistic I'm not gonna go through the removal of the of that stuff we can actually begin uh, with the readout on the chip <coughs> 